Hey, folks, I got another headline for you. This is for my next guest. U.S. crude in the SPR, which is the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, hits the lowest level since 1985. Joining me now, Bonson Group Managing Director David Bonson. And David, you know, it's ironic because as the stock market was putting in that scor scorching bear market bounce, crude oil was simply being scorched. The roles may be reversing now, stocks struggling, crude catching a bit. Could this be the beginning of a next leg higher? Well, it depends on what aspect of the energy markets people are investing in. But I will say this. This has been going on for a while now that energy is totally non-correlated to the broader markets. In 2021, the whole market went higher, but energy was up 45 percent. So they weren't necessarily positively correlated. It's just that energy was going up a lot more. This year, it's been more inverse. Energy's up quite substantially. And as we know, the markets are down quite a bit. The issue is not just the crude oil price. Natural gas right now today oh, yeah. is at a 15-year high. Uh, we have ongoing supply issues that force margins higher, and demand, of course, is not yet eroded to a point that is bringing prices down. We have huge opportunities for U.S. energy independence, for a growth sector to provide energy to Asian and European allies. There's a lot of dimensions to this story. Yeah, well, we're seeing already, I think, you know, record exports. Although I don't know politically anybody wants to talk about that in the White House because uh, <laughs> because gasoline prices any, and most Americans are wondering why the hell are we shipping it off to China. But th to your point, there's a lot of parts to this whole complex. Where's the best area? Where are the best areas rather to be investing in a, in a stock market? Well, I think in the stock market, when it comes to the energy sector, I continue to love the midstream space because I don't want to have an excessive amount of leverage to the price of oil and gas, which can always go down for macroeconomic reasons, for technical reasons, for supply disruptions. Those things to me are hard to bet on. Now, we know that there's huge margins right now. The CapEx that these companies upstream, the producers and drillers are spending, is a third of what it was six, seven years ago when oil prices were high. Their margins are high, as it should be. Right. There's all these external pressures from environmentalists and governmental actors telling them not to spend more on CapEx. I like the capital discipline, but see, the midstream sector is where you can get paid for what we desperately need in the U.S. and what we desperately need to export to other other countries. I don't agree, Charles, that selling to China is what we're talking about with exports. We're talking about providing liquefied natural gas to okay. Japan, to Europe, Germany. Right. We need to be the people getting those jobs in our country to export to the world as our customer. I agree with you 1,000 percent. Of course, on the other end, we'd like to see Germany and, and these other countries, you know, bulk up, build up so they can receive it rather than hoping that Russia doesn't turn That's off right. Nord Stream 1 or 2 on any given day. You know, I saw your, your piece titled uh, Against Doomdayism. Why did you feel compelled to write that? Why do we need to hear that right now? Yeah, I added a segment to my daily market commentary. So inside the dctoday.com, there's a piece called Against Doomsdayism. And I'll tell you why I had to do it, because too many people have adopted the religion of doomsdayism, both left and right. I happen to be a movement conservative guy, but I hear too much pessimism and doomsday talk from my friends on the right as well, Charles. The world is not ending. People use it as a sort of therapeutic medicine. It may it's a coping mechanism for them to feel negative all the time. It goes against the facts of history. It goes against the reality of the great blessings that God has given us that we're living in right now. And ultimately, economically, pessimism never pays. You have points in time where traders can make money being right. pessimistic. But long term, I want to be long humanity. I believe in the animating spirit of free enterprise and the capabilities God gave mankind to steward creation. We monetize that in a free market economy and being doomsdayist all the time is silly. All I can say is amen, brother. Thanks so much, David. Appreciate it.